What's going on, everyone? It's Bales, and welcome back to another episode of the Weekend Forecast. Got a very, very special guest, a former uh, Hawthorne Premiership player and West Coast player, media personality, and just all around good bloke, uh, Xavier Ellis. Zave, mate, how you going? Good, mate. Pleasure to uh, to be here. Fridays are pretty good for me. Uh, finish work at about 9 o'clock in the morning, so, um, yeah, I'm off to face the music with the kids this Arvo, but uh, a good little spot here to have a chat. Yep, uh, we've got plenty, we've got a fair few things to get through with the round coming up. George Hill obviously is a big out that um, everyone last night was going a bit uh, frantic with him being out. But uh, firstly, I want to ask you though, um, before we get stuck in everything, obviously you and your brother have got uh, your bet with the with the Bola Grange. How's, how, if people don't obviously subscribe to Selby's podcast, which you should hopefully buy now, but if you don't, mm-hmm. how's the battle for the Grange bottle going? No, I'm absolutely cast, mate. Um I've already started. He's already installed the wine uh, wine fridge, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a fair bit lighter. And then the funny thing is, neither of us drink red wine, so um, stupid bet, unnecessary bet. Um, and uh, I put it all on Darcy Parish. I mean, I, I, I tend to uh, and selves if you do listen to the podcast. I love yeah. fantasy. I enjoy doing it. I'm no good at it uh, most of the time because I've had a few beers on a Friday night uh, before the first bounce and. Uh, all hells to pay when I come to trades. I just trade in players that are playing usually. Um, but twice I bought in Darcy Parrish. The first time he uh, was captain and scored 30. And then I went back to give him a second chance and he was a late out and I had no replacement. So uh, essentially I've had three scores from Darcy Parrish, uh, one as captain and then one as a zero. So um, yeah, no, I'm going no good, mate. Yeah, well, that was that was my uh, I had Taranto um, in round five. I brought him in before Toby Green came back, thinking, yeah. "Oh, he's going to go nuts." But yeah, he went downhill from there, and then he got an injured back and whatever, and he hasn't been he hasn't been amazing since. But he's, I'm still sort of happy. He's still nah. a good player, but yeah, just Giants. There's just like you and Selby talk about all the time. It's just too many cooks in the kitchen, too many too many midfielders there, and whatever Giants are just frustrating this year as well. So um, doesn't really work with that, but. Yes. So anyway, mm. let's get stuck into um, everything coming up with the round as well. Obviously, obviously, if you haven't already, well, just for this video, just give subscribe the channel, leave a like on the video. We're already over five hundred subs, so um, very much appreciate. And obviously, we it's great to have uh, Zave on the show. So we'll look at tonight's game. Um, so firstly, um, I don't normally ask people that come on. I should probably do some more in the future. Who do you think wins this game out of Richmond and Fremantle tonight? Um, and I, I think Richmond, uh, and I know it sounds a bit silly because uh, they got rolled by North last weekend, but uh, no Dusty, no Tom Lynch, obviously a concern. But I can just imagine Damien Hardwick will have them wound up as tight as you've ever seen. They'll be out firing. Uh, they're almost playing for their season. Uh, I work with Andrew Embley, who said they can't make finals this week. I mean, rewind two weeks ago when we had them some winning the flag. Uh, they lost to Gold Coast in the game they should have won. Uh, if was it Arts or someone's not even open goal, or not open goal, but had the opportunity. Uh, no, yeah, uh, Castagna yes. to to sorry, to finish to finish the game uh, to ice it, and then last week, um, you yeah, know, the play on as well. So there's two yeah. games there. They win those two, and everyone has them probably second or third favourite for the flag. But uh, now they're fighting for their finals uh, life. Just how tight the season is. Uh, but I think that at home, uh, if it was in in Perth, it'd be a different uh, different boat. But I'm casting uh, Richmond's favour. Yeah, I, I don't know. Something about Frio. Frio doing well this year. Obviously, being in the West yourself, yeah. you'd know exactly how, how well they're going, but they're flying. Um, I don't think there's not any like sort of major. Oh, actually, no, well, the major changeover. I didn't realize that. I completely forgot about Rory Lobb's not playing. So that's obviously a big out for, for Frio tomorrow. Uh, but they do get Alex Pierce back, but obviously different positions. But uh, in fantasy, have you got anyone um, floating in from this game um, in the first game of the round? No, I don't. Um, I've, I've had Andy Brayshaw in the side about 15 times, and just due to circumstances, <laughs> uh, he's been out because, you know, I've had injuries left, right and centre uh, or a couple of inebriated trades late in on a Friday afternoon. But, um, look, Andy Brayshaw is obviously relevant, uh, and I'm speaking as though you should be speaking to Selby. He's the genius and I'm the goose. But um, Andy Brayshaw, the horse bolted on him with me. Uh, by the time I almost circled back to get him again, he was just too expensive. Uh, I love Andy. Um, he is how do I? He is seen as an inside midfielder, Andy Brayshaw, uh, yeah, but he simply not, isn't. Not. He yeah. isn't. 
He, he's as outside of an inside midfielder as you can get. Last two weeks, I think he's had one clearance each game. So he's off to the races. As soon as that ball leaves, he's off. So yep. not that Richmond really do any sort of tagging by any measure, but um, I can imagine he'll be off tonight. And uh, Nat Fife, I can see Nat Fife playing more midfield time. So Will Brody yep. may be the one who gets uh, – because they need to throw caution to the wind with Fife. Uh, as good as Will yep. Brody's been, he's certainly not a Nat Fife. So at some stage they need to uh, at least say, here's Fife, he's 80% centre bounces and see what you can do. Yeah, no, he's, he's, he hasn't obviously been getting as much midfield time. Obviously, Frio's midfield has been great this year and also yeah. coming back from that sort of long that long layoff. But now, Brayshaw, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, he goes all right tonight. Do you think he's in with a – obviously, he's in, in within a running for the brown low, but do you have him winning at the moment or, or certainly in the top three currently based on form? Yeah, so I, I found Andy Brayshaw for the brown low at the start of the season. So um, I've uh, – been watching that closely on the same theory that I found Ollie Wines last season um, at the same sort of value, uh, about 40s, because they're a pretty good team. Port Adelaide were a pretty good team last year. Freo are a pretty good team this year. Uh, and they win 70% of their games or, or whatever it is. So 70% of the time, they're going to get the votes, essentially. Um, and who else is going to take votes off Andy Brayshaw? Who else was going to take votes off Ollie Wines last year? Um, you know, Fife was injured for the first half of the season, so he's obviously a Brownlow medalist times two, so he can poll, but he wasn't even out there. So, um, yeah, I think he I think he probably does win it, to be honest with you. They've won enough games, and, um, you know, he's averaging 30 disposals. Uh, the crowd love him. He's outside. He's noticed. Um, all that sort of stuff. So I think he probably does win it. Yeah, he's, he's definitely up. I've got him definitely up there, that's for sure. He's been he's been fantastic this year, obviously. I didn't start with him. I know a couple of people did. That would have been probably a Selby move to start with him, and then he ends up doing well. Still can't get over Selby. 19th or 18th in Supercoach. So he just yeah goes over the other format and starts blitzing nah, that. Nah, so he, He's – um and for those – like, Selby's is just a normal guy. Uh, but he just – the way I explain it, he just treats it like an investment, uh, whereas yeah. I can't do that. Like, I refuse to bring Aaron Hall into my side. He could be scoring 400 <laughs> yeah. a week, and I'm not bringing him in. Whereas yeah. Selby just, it's almost like Leon Cameron used to say, when getting feedback, don't worry about who the player is, put a paper bag over their head. It's more of a learning uh, experience. Whereas, um, so Selby just puts the paper bag over the player's head, doesn't care who it is. Uh, whereas I yeah. can't do that. If I, if I don't like the player, I can't have a miss. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't know. I, Used to be very much like that. I used to be whoever I love, they're in my team. Whoever I don't yeah. like, they're not in my team, not coming close. It could be the highest averaging part, I don't care. But um, yeah. sort of as I've done fantasy a little bit longer, I've I've just had to go, I'm that competitive, I want to finish as high as possible. I can't, yeah. I have to just cut the heads off and just focus on what they're doing. Um, yeah. But yeah. No, and that's, just, and that's yeah. the way to do it. Yeah, but what this is, this is your this is your first actual year, like year taking, like in doing fantasy in some tanks, seriously, isn't it? Nah, it was second, but first, yeah. Second. Last year, uh, last year with Selbs, I did it, but I was finished, I was coming third or fourth or something at one stage early in the season, so I got the photo of that. Um, yeah. But in the no, nah, mate, it's my second year, but it's I, I yeah. spent too much time on it to be really poor at it, if that makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's 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 it is a hard game. What last night when George the news George Hill was going out, everyone was bloody saying like f bomb this, f bomb yeah. that. Um, I would do it, but not. I would this video might get taken down if I do that, so I better not be putting yeah, yeah. swearing or anything. But, um, but yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, just fantasy. Just it's stressful and it, it is hard, very hard at times. But talk about another couple of other players in this game. So obviously, Jaden Short moved from defence into yep. midfield. Obviously, his scoring has obviously suffered because of that. Um, what do you what do you think of him at like being as a midfielder? Like, do you are you more impressed mm. with him as a midfielder, or do you think he should be playing in defence? Where he's been playing his best footy. No, no, I, I don't. I don't care how good Daniel Rioli is going, which he has. He's become a, a nice defender. I mean, James Short won the best and fairest in a premiership season um, in, in defence. I love his kick. Um, he's a settler. Don't get me wrong. He's got that uh, fantasy bone, essentially, where the cheap kicks a good kick occasionally. But um, oh, I think tonight, maybe tonight, we see him back in defence. Um, it's worked for so many years. As we said, Richmond are playing for their sort of their season, I suppose. Um, uh, if, if if he's back in defence, he's 100 plus, no dramas. But when he's in the midfield yeah. and then he was resting forward, 
Um, try try playing in a forward line where I know Tom Lynch is not playing, but um, Jack Rewalt, Bolton, um, Bolton goes. You, you, you're lost, and he does that um, yeah. graveyard shift that we mentioned, which is the high half forward where you don't know where you're you got the Heaney, yeah, the sort of Heaney role, yeah. No man's and we really like Tony Green for such a superstar because he can do that role, and not many can. Yeah, yeah, it's just. Yeah, it's. It, I, I agree. I, he is a better defender and, and shouldn't be sort of well, not shoehorned in. Well, yeah, shoehorned in the forward line a little bit because he's not a forward. But yeah. I guess they like that he's going inside the forward fifty. But he was still kicking inside the forward fifty off the halfback flank, so they don't necessarily yeah, need him in the right. midfield. They've already got they've got plenty of midfielders as well that they can. They've got a couple of young guys like your your Collie Dawkins and stuff like that that could be playing in the yeah. midfield over short. Keep him in defence, as you said. Daniel Rose has been great, but. Short's their best defender, mm. I think, coming out of defence. But the other guy, obviously, yeah. you know, I'm obviously personally very well, um, Sean Darcy. Obviously, he hasn't been mm. amazing this year. He's obviously had, he had, obviously was ill earlier in the year. That obviously probably knocked him around a bit. He obviously has had a couple of injuries and stuff. Um, what, what what do you reckon? But what do you reckon? Is it been exactly those reasons that he's been playing poor this year? Or, or do you think that he's just not needed mm. as much because Frio, the rest of the team's just flying? No, it's interesting, isn't it? Like best and fairest winner last year, and they're talking about, and it's a completely relevant topic. But bringing in Luke Jackson for a million bucks. Well, what what position is Luke Jackson going to play? Your best and fairest winner is your ruckman. Um, he, he's had a sore thumb. He got that flu that kicked around. You know that flu that made everyone three quarts die. Well, that yeah. he had that, and that knocked him around. Um, so. He's, he hasn't had a season like he had last year, which has been a little bit disappointing. Um, and he does look like he hobbles around a little bit. But um, so tonight there's no uh, no Rory Lobb uh, playing. So maybe Sean Darcy does 80% ruck work, uh, which might be yeah. a good thing just to bash him back into form a little bit. So there's no option to go play forward. There's no option to come to the bench. you just got to be a um, you know an athlete and just grind it out. And you know, he's yeah. playing rucking against the big nank who's probably a similar sort of player. You know, they just grind and grind and grind. Um, yeah. yeah, so I'm not off Sean Darcy in terms of the fantasy this weekend. I think that he's a 2v1, and sometimes I love backing the one player, just thinking, well, yeah. you're going to be doing the lion's share of it, so you might have a big night. I feel like, yeah, he's the sort of guy that when he's going up against those, the harder ruckman, like, I think his best game of the season was against Max Gorn when Frio won at the MCG. So... He does tend to do mm. obviously better mm. against either the better Rutman or against like the two pronged like the Yasin Kilders and stuff like that. But but yeah, and then the only other player from that game, obviously Will Brody, probably would be what one of the top couple of recruits for the year. Would you have him as the um, recruit of the year, or do you think maybe there's a couple of others about above him? Nah, I don't think anyone in the world could have seen Will Brody doing what he's doing. Um, he's just a traditional footballer, so uh, I think he probably does fall in that category. Uh, but I am wary tonight that uh, I can just see Longy, uh, just Longy, pulling the trigger on uh, the Nat Fife experience and just seeing how it goes. So I'd just be a bit wary of Will Brody. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with that. I, like he's, 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 he hasn't been that guy that's going to get you one twenties every week. He's that consistent sort of like eighty five to one hundred five guy. So, but yeah, he's been super. I didn't, I almost didn't start with him because I just sort of thought I heard Selbs talking and he's just like I didn't know if he was even going to be in the team round one because. They just had all these midfielders, but he was able to stay in the team. He's been playing really well. So, yeah, he's been very good. Um, move on to the North Melbourne and uh, Hawthorne game. So, two, so actually three players I want to speak to you about. Um, that, so, Elder used the first ones. He's been playing fantastic footy. I think I'm pretty sure he was he in the same draft as Clary Oliver. Uh, that oh, that's a bloody good question. I, so, it's Clary's 24. Uh, LDU would be similar to that. Um, how old is sorry, I'm, I can find it. Um, but yeah, LDU, I've got him in the draft league, I drafted him, and that's one thing. Uh, my draft team is bloody not too bad, so yeah, uh, as much as I'm getting pantsed in uh, in traditional, uh, so LDU's 23, so maybe yeah, a year younger. Um, but yeah, I've got him age, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I remember Matty Lloyd um, saying that the LBU reminds him of a Chris Judd, and I nearly swallowed yeah, a yeah. glass just full. I was like, "What are you talking about? This bloke's got no idea." Uh, and then you can see glimpses of it, can't you? He, he comes yeah. out the front of stoppages. He's powerful. Finds the footy. I mean, Chris Judd was doing it at eighteen, not twenty-three. But you can yeah. see the, the comparisons of that power. So um, 
No, LDU, big fan. Uh, I didn't bring him in this week, but he was certainly in my side at, at one stage uh, simply because he's good to watch. He's a, he's a nice yep. footballer to watch. Playing the Hawks also helps because I'll keep a close eye on it. Um, yep. And he, he's scoring well. Yeah, no, he's, he's he, yeah. He, as you said, he's got those like traits of your Chris Judd. But obviously, as you said, Chris Judd was was it five against Brisbane in your first year? Was that the, yeah, one? Was that the one Brisbane? He yeah. played a practice game over uh, practice game. He played a waffle game over here, and I think at half time they made the mind up that he was going to be playing AFL the next week, and never again went back. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, he's incredible. You don't get too many eight. Well, no, maybe Nick Dacos is, is certainly doing sort of similar type things to what Judd yeah. obviously different position sort of thing, but. But yeah, I'm sure we'll talk about Nick Dacos um, later on. But yeah, LDU, obviously been great. Tom Mitchell. So obviously yeah. you and yourself have talked about this plenty of times, about him not playing as much in midfield. Personally, for me, I don't know why he doesn't get as much midfield time because he's being a Brownlow Mavs. But obviously understand that Josh Ward, your John Newcombs, your Dylan mm-hmm. Moores, who's now playing more midfield as well, that I know you're a big fan of Dylan Moore. What, do you think that Tom yeah. Mitchell will be at Hawthorne next year? Um, or do you see scoring improving? Or do you just see that this is just, Mitchell now, and, and that this is what he's going to be. Uh, well, he, he's playing that role when he doesn't play midfield. I spoke about the Toby Green sort of stuff where it's bloody hard. Um, Tom Mitchell, I, I, I really like Titch. I think he's a good fellow and a bloody good footballer. But, um, you know, last weekend, for example, Ward has 34 touches. Um, yeah, in five great. years' time, is, is Ward is Ward being so uh, I can't see all changing at all. Uh, I think he's going to be pretty much wedged uh, in maybe a 50-50 sort of role. Uh, Newcomb, of course, the yeah. mid-season selection uh, is going well. And even McDonald and those sort of young kids showed a little bit on the weekend. So yeah. uh, I can't see much changing with Tom. And will he be there next year? What's his value? And But also, you still need leadership. You still need leadership and experience yeah. around a football club. Uh, a kid comes in and he's training with a Brownlow medalist. I mean, that's something special. So, um, you know, it's not always what you see on the footy field that matters. Uh, there's bits and pieces that can be done away from the cameras that also is, is yeah. equally as important. I think because, yeah, just our fantasy coaches were just so focused on, like, what's his scoring? What's his points? How many touches has he got? But yeah. obviously... Obviously, being a coach and that behind the scenes, it's just it's a lot. Obviously, fantasy is not even on the radar. It's just about what they yeah. do for the team, how the team best functions, and clearly, obviously, um, like Sam Mitchell and the, and the coaches think that these younger guys, are obviously, going to be the ones moving forward, and Mitchell can sort of help out when he's in there, and then obviously plays yeah. well outside of there. So, but no, but Dylan Moore, one of the guys that's gone in the last couple of weeks, he's been great. Obviously, as I said before, I know you're a huge fan of Dylan Moore. Um, I yeah. What he was, wasn't he uh rookie? What wasn't he uh delisted then re rookie listed or something? And and he just come out and, and been playing great footy every chance. I, I, I bloody haven't looked that deep, but I do know like Mitch Lewis was picked up. Well, Mitch Lewis, Kaczynski, and more were all pick up, picked up after pick 50. Um, yeah. you know, it, it struck gold on, on at least two of them. Um, but more, I, I have like a headless chook reading, um, which yep. I love is when players go in the midfield. And they're just headless chooks. Um, Chad yeah. Warner's got a bit of a bit of headless chook about him. Uh, Blakey's got a little bit of headless chook about him. I love it. And and Moore's got the headless chook. He's hard. He's tough. He's he's fanatic. Uh, he doesn't know what he's doing. Others don't know what he's doing. But most of all, he's a, he's a classy, polished footballer who yeah. um, who would have thought that to start with this season he was going to kick so many goals. And then not only no, does he kick goals, never can find thirty disposals. Um, he, he's become a, an all round footballer. Yeah, no, he's 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 playing very very good footy. So he's uh, is uh, I don't know if you've got him in your team, but is he if you don't, is he on your radar? And if you do have him, how he's obviously scoring very well at the moment, playing the midfield. Yeah, I bought Marshall in this week over him. Um, yep, simple as that. I just without Paddy Ryder. Um, but then again, um, I've got a work luncheon uh, this afternoon. I got the kids and then a work luncheon. Work, kids meeting, work luncheon. Uh, yeah. So by the time it comes to Friday night, who knows who's in my team? He could well be back. <laughs> yeah, and I think that Tom Campbell's named uh, in the extended squad with mm. uh, Marshall as well. But I, I, I see that more as cover if he's if he's sick or whatever. I don't see them playing both, but yeah, yeah be interesting. But then the final play from this game, obviously Sicily. So you're a huge fan. I was talking to Hawthorne supporter last night, and we were both saying that he's the obvious next captain. Like he's just. A great leader and and he's 
to come back from an ACL injury and be not only playing fantastic footy, but averaging 94 for the season. And he just hasn't looked mm. like he's missed a beat. So he would he be right? Well, he'd probably be, would, do you reckon he's winning the Hawks best and fairest this year? Uh, yeah, him or more probably. Um, yeah. Yeah, you'd think it probably is. Um, well, probably certainly is when you really, when you probably really dig into it. Um, yeah, just a fantastic football. I love his emotion too. It, 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 again, that's a little bit of the headless chalk. He doesn't yeah. know whether he's going to punch someone or spoil, and he just goes and sees <laughs> what happens. And yeah, his kick probably is what separates him from others. Um, a big key position, well, not a big key position, but a key position player um, who his kick it, it, often you when, when I play the key positions often try to give it to the smallers to go, hey, please get it out of my hands and do the job. Yeah. Whereas James Sisley's foot, you know, short and but the long kick, uh, he's a spectacular footballer. Uh, and, and you're right, future captain, no dramas there. Not a lot of clubs have, you know, someone at that age ready to go. He probably would have been captain this year uh, when you think about yeah. it. Um, yeah, but unfortunately, big boy, uh, me at his neck, and he was a, he's a good captain as it is, and, and Sicily had an yeah. ACL, so you don't want to bring him in off that. But uh, you'd almost imagine that's a handshake agreement, done deal, come round 23. Yeah, no, I, th- I think so. He's just, he's just uh, yeah, he's locked in, well, for me in the All-Australian team, he has to be in there, and... He's just been fantastic. Just, just, yeah. You don't see many of these players come out from an ACL, and it takes them more often than not at least half a year, if not a full season, to sort of get back. And then the following year yeah. they play well. But he's just, he's come back like he hasn't even missed, or arguably better than what he was playing before he left. Because as you said, his kick hits his um, targets every single time. He's obviously mm. great in the air. Obviously, just and a fantastic defender as as that um, as a backup option as well. So. But yeah, so that's from that game. Um, who do you have winning that game? Actually, that's a uh, uh, where's that? Is that MC? Uh, I have the Hawks, but but I think that oh, um, the yeah, I have the Hawks down in uh, down in Tassie. Tassie can throw up a few weird, wonderful things, especially with that breeze. Sometimes you turn on, it's eight goals to nil, and you go, "Jesus, what's going on here?" And then you flick it on yep. and realise that that um, you you and I could kick them from the centre. Um, yeah. But uh, look, I've got the Hawks. The Hawks playing Tassie all the time. Um, but North off the back of last week, I don't have a lot of confidence about that. So I, I, it's certainly not going to be a blowout. Uh, it's going to be a good game of footy. Yeah, no, North were great this uh, last week. Obviously, my best mate's a North Melbourne fan, so he was he's definitely letting me know that they, they had a good win. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm a, well, I'm a Crows man. And talking about Crows, uh, we'll yep. move on to the Sydney and Adelaide game. So, okay, so I need I need to talk about this guy first up, right? My boy. Mm-hmm. So, actually, who who would be, if you had to pick on the AFL, who would be your boy? Who's the one player that you're like, that's my boy? Mate, we might have even just spoken about him. Um, it, it could be, oh, I've got probably two, uh, probably Sicily and uh, yeah. Zach Bailey uh, up in Brisbane. Yeah, oh, yes, uh, yeah, Zach really Bailey, I know you're him. Fired, hasn't really fired this year, but uh, I've got a soft spot uh, for Zach Bailey as well. Yep, yeah, no, well, my boy, Rory Laird. Absolutely love yeah. him. I just, it's over a million dollars, which is fantastic. He's the number one player in the game, which obviously makes me happy because I've been on him for, for years. I I remember, I don't yeah. I, I don't know if it was you. I don't know which podcast I heard it from. Um, someone said in 2017 when he was playing as defender, if he was playing in the midfield, he would have been up there in the brown low with Dusty. I don't know who said no. that, but he's just... 20 tackles last week, obviously AFL yeah. uh, men's record. Obviously, Ebony and Marinoff got 21 in the AFLW, but obviously two Adelaide players holding that mantle now. He gets the ball. He's in tough. He's very much like your, your Mitchell with the, just the quick give, the contested that go unnoticed. Like sometimes look at the stats and he's had 11 or 12 in a quarter and I've like, I barely noticed him, but he gets those little yeah. quick um, possessions. How do you think he's tracking this year? Do you think maybe, well, he's probably, he's definitely got the best and fairest thing this year. Um, maybe Dawson yeah. would be close, but... Brownlow contention potentially with some with some maybe some votes. What do you think? Uh, probably not enough wins uh, to to be the Brownlow chat. The only thing that was starting to frustrate me with Rory Laird a tiny bit was those games where he's had thirty handballs, and I just think you, yep. you're a better player than the handball. Um, I did a bit of math. It was something like 150 handballs and 70 kicks over a five week period, and he's a better player yep. than that. And that's why I loved him at half back. Yeah, he, those little pick trotters would start charging off half back, and he was a beautiful kick. And then last week, uh, when he had the 20 tackles, his kicking ratio flipped. Went just, and then you go, gee whiz, uh, what yep. a spectacular footballer, fantasy wise. Uh, I had him, 
I had him in all year, and then I traded him out to Darcy Parish. That was part of the trouble. Was, uh, uh, okay, Parrish yeah. Save a little bit of money and da da da, and duck and leave, and they outsmarted myself. But uh, Rory Laird will win that best and fairest by a mile. You're right, Jordan Dawson against his old mob this weekend, but uh, he's had a great, great season. Um, you know, occasionally a quiet one here and there, whereas Laird, Laird just doesn't have quiet games. Yeah, like. What, what, what was the stat that I read? Um, I think his lowest disposal tally in the last two years is 24, and that was in mm. round 10 against St Kilda, who are quite restrictive for opposition midfielders. Yeah. But he's just consistent, 25 touches. He's going to have your, your six, seven tackles. He'll, he'll pop for a couple of marks as well. But, yeah, as you said, last week he had the 19 kicks, 12 handballs. Obviously, that was pro- do you think that was probably mostly down to the weather, I'd imagine? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, but, but it, it, I, I just, I just think his game to even go to that next level is he's good enough to kick it more. But he's, yeah. don't, he, he's a, a, a superstar, like an absolute superstar. So, yeah. no, you've chosen, you've chosen a good one there to be a fan favourite of. Yeah, no, hundred percent. But uh, do you reckon? Because all Australians can be difficult because you've already Clary's got a spot there locked down. Lockie Neal, I would imagine, would probably have a spot down, and Andy Brayshaw's got to have a spot there. So, is there? Maybe a spot for Laird on the bench or something, or is there somewhere else you could like fit him? Because obviously, I know that yeah. the old Australian team they like putting midfielders at half, which I don't agree with. I think it should be the best players. Yeah. Like, I, I remember you said to Selby, I think last week on the pod, put your wingers in the all Australian team on the wing. So, yeah, yeah, no, nah, uh, maybe on the bench because you go right, oh, uh, Clary and Petrarch has been exceptional as well, and yep, he's another one, a, a midfielder. Uh, Lockie Neal, if Brayshaw wins the Brown, they're probably going to be hard to, to skip out on him. Then how much work did um, you know Paddy Cripps do early in the season? If he finishes with a strong five games at the end of the year, does he does he wrestle his arm does he arm wrestle his way back in there? Midfield's such a hard spot. Uh, he'll certainly be in the squad. Uh, whether he pinches that bench spot, uh, time will tell. Yeah, yeah, I. I... I love him, but I don't think he's going to get there just because Crows, as you mentioned before, haven't won enough games. He's not going yeah. to get that recognition that those other guys are. And, and yeah, I just think that a few other guys just had outstanding years. So um, another guy's had a very good year as well. So Callum Mills. So he yeah. obviously started the year with that Achilles sort of uh, people worried about that. He had a couple of games to warm up, but he's been, he's been great. I just don't understand what, while long Mike keeps putting him behind what well, I do, but Behind the ball, mm. where he's like, he's his best position is midfield. So, what do you what do you think about him just continuing changes? Do you think it's still the right move to put him behind the ball? Do you think best position midfield and leave him there? Well, it, it, I think midfield and leave him there. Uh, the only thing is, um, it, he's done that backline role for so long. He's a leader. Yeah. He reads the ball so well, uh, and it's also he's he's so tough and uh, impact all the time. So when he does drift behind the footy for five minutes, it probably just gives him a breather. I'm not going to get cleaned up. I don't need a tackle. Uh, and, of course, you know, Chad Warner's off his head uh, at the moment. Luke Parker is Luke Parker. Um, you know, I know he hasn't had the, the fantasy relevant season, but, I mean, it's still Luke Parker. Uh, so they've got enough players that go through there. So I sort of get it. Uh, but I think he's just certainly best suited to just being a midfielder. But when the pressure comes on, uh, and coaches panic, and you've got one lever to pull, and it's um, and it's Mills to defence. Uh, it's it's pretty pretty quick one that you just pull to just to settle and get a bit of flow of the game back in your favour. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with that. And then obviously you mentioned the last guy I was going to talk about as well, Chad Warner, obviously um, a member of the as you like to call them, the headless chooks with your Blakeys and your McInerneys yeah. and stuff. But Warner's just he's just a very very good football. I don't know if he's going to have the consistent fantasy numbers at the moment, but he's mm. definitely going to be a player of of the future for sure. He's just. He's just that running power in the midfield and the way even the way he uses the ball as well. Like I obviously yeah. he had to kick to Buddy for his thousandth goal and hitting targets up. But yeah, he's he's definitely a player on the up, that's for sure. Yeah, my little brother, and I don't like giving him credit ever. Um he texted me at the start of the year and he said, Um he Warner Warner will win the Sydney best and fairest. And I said, You need to be drug tested or something like that. <laughs> um, yeah, he'd be lucky to be top ten. Well, he won't probably won't win. I think Mills will probably win it, but um well, what, what a player. Uh, and he was he was the fourth player drafted from East Fremantle in that in that one team. Like he was the yeah, yep. fourth. So um he was under everyone's nose. Um, yeah, anyone could have grabbed him, but uh Gee, hasn't he? And he's tough too. Like he's tough. Yeah. And I think that you, when you go to Sydney and you've got Josh Kennedy and you've got Luke Parker, 
uh, and, right, and meals. Uh, the leaders there, you know, he's a blood spirit or whatever they call it. Um, oh, it's, it's, it's an easy place to learn how to play footy the right way. Well, oh, 100%, yeah. I, I, Because I was going through the coaches with mate the other day and I was saying that, because he's North Melbourne fan, because we were talking about Alistair Clarkson, we're like, where's he going to go? And being North mm. Melbourne fan, he's obviously, I'd love him at, obviously, um, North, obviously. And we were going through the teams and, the, like, there wasn't many teams I saw change kind of like Giants, obviously, will they'll even whether they'll keep McVay or whether they'll move on to another coach or something. But, but yeah, I'd, Longmire and Chris Scott were the two that we were saying that because they played so for so long that they're not, I don't see them getting sacked. They'll leave on their terms. And nah. like, Sydney have just been, Sydney have been so consistent for such a yeah. long period of time. And everyone just, every, like there's good leaders there all the time. They never get rid of those leaders and they're always there. Nah. And the young kids just learn off them all the time. Yeah, they just go generation to generation. It's, it's yeah. crazy how... And the baton just gets passed on. Um, and that just shows a, a strong footy club. Yeah, no, 100%. Um, moving on, uh, actually, so Sydney, you think, win the game, SCG? Uh, yeah, Sydney get that done, unfortunately, mate. Uh, yeah. You, you crow, you... Well, actually, you, did you win there last year? Was that right early in the season when Taylor Walker might have kicked four or five or something? Uh, uh, we, we, I remember that game. I remember that game. I was down at my grandparents' place down at... Um, down near the co- down the coast, um, uh, that we played well for about a half, but we were inaccurate and and that right. that shot us in the foot. So, but te- yeah, okay. Tex was very very good in that game as well. So yeah, but yeah, hopefully Tex can do well. But yeah, I don't I don't see I don't see us getting the job done um, against no. Sydney in Sydney as well. Especially Sydney are looking for your finals and stuff like that. Whereas we're sort of rebuilding um, as a yeah. sort of a very young list. Um, but yeah, so uh, Port Adelaide and Geelong. So this is yeah Adelaide Oval, the Twilight game. So. There's actually not too many players in this game to speak because there's not obviously a huge amount of fantasy players in this game. But like, so Ollie Wine's the first one to speak about. So I know you're you're a big fan of of Ollie. Obviously, played an amazing year last year, but this year just hasn't mm. obviously been his year. Obviously, he's moved out of the midfield a little bit more because your Rosies, your Butters, and stuff like that have been playing a lot more. But what do you think? What do you think is up with Wines? Is it just because that little bit of the role change, or do you just think because he had the heart thing? That's probably the thing that slowed him down, um, and he just hasn't mm. been able to get his continuity back. No, I, I, maybe he was fitter last year. Uh, he seemed to get to so many more un, uh, uncontested positions. Like he was an, yeah. an outlet kick, like Callum Mills. We see we just spoke about Pop and, and Rory, uh, Rory Laird. They're that fifteen meter inside forty five, outside forty five. He seemed to be there all the time. Now watching the games, he doesn't seem to be there. Um, different role, I guess. Plays a little bit more forward. But I, I don't get it sometimes. Is you're sacrificing, and I know um, Zach Butters is loved, and you know, oh, he's tough, but he's not as good as Ollie Wines in the midfield. No. So I don't get why some teams go, let's put Ollie Wines forward, and uh, and Zach Butters, who, who's going to be a good player, and Rosie's yeah. gone absolutely bananas. But you're losing your Brownlow medalist as a forward. He's just an average forward. As a midfielder, he's a star. Yeah. Um, and I think that's probably sort of changed a little bit of how he's been going. It's just those opportunities to to sneak out and get an easy possession. He doesn't seem to get an easy possession this year. No, no. Uh, like it seemed to change actually when he played North and he kicked, I think, three goals, two or something down at down yeah. in Tassie and had a good game. And since then, he's been playing more forward. Did he have a little niggle that day? I think he might have hurt his elbow or yeah, so he had something. Something's going on. Something happened, and then he then it just worked. But they're playing North. Um, so maybe yeah. it wouldn't have just worked if they were playing top eight side or something. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, um, the, I think the only other person I want to talk about probably Mitch Duncan. So I know obviously yeah. Selby preseason had him as his number one um, forward. Obviously had a bit of a niggle at the start of his first game, but he's he's been very good. Obviously, in the, especially in the absence of your, your Tom Stewart, which obviously should be back next week for Geelong, but he just. Keeps, keeps getting it done. Well, I think he's over 30 now, I think, or near 30 if he's not 30 already. And he just gets it done every single week. And he's just a great player for Geelong. Yeah, Dunks is certainly over 30. Uh, he won't be 32, maybe. Yeah. Um, he is an exceptional player. Plays footy the, the way you wish you could play. Never looks rushed. Uh, never really shirks it. Can, go and, can play inside, can play outside. When he's outside, he's one of the best kicks in the comp. Uh, when he's inside, you're petrified of, you know, if you can stream out of a stoppage, who's, who's Chest, Hawkins or Cameron, he's going to kick the ball through. Uh, Mitch Duncan, a, a good Perth boy. Uh, slow, slow this season to get started. Obviously had some injuries early in the season. But, I mean, the last six weeks. And again, one of those roles where, oh, we'll play him half forward, then a little bit half back, and then we'll put him on the wing. 
it feels like he's just had a bit more continuity in his role as well. Yeah, no, you see, like, because I'm, because not, I've obviously, he has these soft tissue sort of niggles every now and again, but he's, I don't, he hasn't missed a game since round two, I don't think. I think he's played every game this season mm. that he's been available. So, I wouldn't, do you reckon he's probably due for a rest within the last month, just because that's what Geelong tend to do with nah. these old puzzles? Do you think he's just going to keep going? Well, I just reckon it took so long to get actually cracking into the season. Um, yeah. But now he's, now he's really running hot that it might just be better just to keep him going hot than, uh, Play around with form. I mean, playing around with form is dangerous. Uh, not the 250 game where it's going to really matter that yeah. much. But I just see him now back to his best. Like, why not keep him there? Yeah, no, agreed. And and they do have the what the, the pre finals buy or whatever. So that's probably the, the, yeah. the reason that yeah, we don't see as many restings um, yeah. now. But uh, Port Geelong, who do you reckon top, takes that? Sorry. And if they finish top two, buy, win, yeah. another week off. Prelim, yeah, you don't, you can't play three. You don't want to have like you don't, you, you don't want to have like yes, yeah, three weeks yeah. off, like your pre finals, you you winning qualifying, yeah, and then, yeah. So too many buys there, but but yeah, who do you reckon takes that game out? Obviously, important game for Port if they want to have any chance of staying. For I think they're probably out of touch now, but who knows? Um, do you think Port or Geelong in this one? I tip Port, um, which I, I have a soft spot for Port though. So if they don't win this week, I'm not tipping them again for the entire year. I don't care who they play. Yeah. Um, I, I, t- I tend to find a storyline why they can win every week and they haven't played a good season. So uh, yeah. I'll tip them once more. Uh, and Geelong is, for some reason, a team that people find hard to buy into. Uh, they're sitting second on the ladder, are they? First on the ladder um, by percentage. And still some people are like, oh, I am Geelong. But, um, yeah. yeah, last chance for them today. Uh, last yeah, chance I, for I, this week, yeah, sorry. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I, I was talking to Geelong support last night and he was saying, don't talk us up. I don't want to be talked up. I've had too many yeah, yeah, heart, yeah. heartbreak in the last few years. But no, I think Geelong, they just they get it done. They just they just know how to recruit. Yeah. I think a cliff will come at some point. It has to come at some point. You've got too many older players, but they just keep getting it done. So, yeah, I, I think Geelong will get it done. I think Hawk, yeah. uh, Hawkins or Cameron always, one of the two or both always fire when they're Adelaide Oval for some reason. So, oh, how good is that one-two punch? Oh, it's probably the... Oh, be one of the best. It got to be one of the best in the AFL. Probably, probably the best in the AFL. If being quite honest here, but well, yeah. Kerno Mackay obviously great, but I think Hawkins. And Cameron I'm taking. Probably... I'm taking Hawkins and Cameron and running straight. Yeah, yeah, because you got. I was saying the, like. the guys like I was saying the guys last night how uh, Hawkins is probably one of the most selfless uh, f- uh, big men forwards. Like he's could have kicked a hundred goals mm. a couple of times, but he he passes it off and brings his teammates in the game, and that's obviously invaluable as a key forward. Yeah, I shared a bedroom with Tommy Hawkins at boarding school, so it's probably something I taught him, just being unselfish and being a well-rounded, yeah. good person. So that's probably what he... It's his birthday yesterday, actually, so I do have to say happy birthday. the a big dope. Yeah. Uh, I wonder, it could be good if Tom Hawkins would tune in tune into this. Um, you never know who tunes into to stuff around. But, yeah, um, no, nah, very good player, Tom Hawkins. Um, Brisbane Gold Coast, so Q, uh, Q Clash or whatever, whatever they call it up there. Um, yeah. They, obviously, this game, obviously... Suns, obviously, what they they lost to, yeah, bad loss to Eston last week. Good win the week yeah. before to Richmond. So, um, so Toot Meller, obviously, was that a bit of a little bit of an inconsistent year, but still getting the job done. Um, what do you what are your thoughts on uh, how he's been going uh, this season? Uh, indifferent, yeah, nowhere near what he was last year. I think for Gold Coast as a team to go up that rung, I think he needs to be second banana, uh, a little bit like a McRae at uh, the Bulldogs. Uh, they've got Bont. Um, so you go, well, okay, if Bont fires, then you probably win the game. But if he doesn't, you've got McRae to, to back it up. Whereas at the moment, Tooks, Tooks their best player, undoubtedly. Um, yeah. Also, not undoubtedly, that's probably unfair. And blokes like Noah Anderson's had a great year and uh, and King, who's been injured. But, um, yeah, uh, it hasn't reached the heights of last year. I know he's probably scoring pretty well. But uh, personally, I, I just don't think it's at that level. No, yeah, it's it, it's it's a lot more. They're just the whole team for Gold Coast is playing a lot more. I, I would I, I'd imagine what Gold Coast would be like if they had Ben King this year. Yeah, yeah, like they. And I, I say, um, and I and I say, if they didn't trade pick two, they'd have Andy Brasher in that midfield too. So, uh, yeah, that would have yeah. been an interesting. Uh, obviously, Well is out with a knee now, which is unfortunate. But uh, they had that piece there, but they just didn't uh, didn't use it the way that. Yeah, you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Gee whiz. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you well, use hindsight at selections, but um, yeah, look, Tuke Miller works hard, uh, gut runner, good leader. Uh, yeah. But 
yeah, I, I just think he's that one, that just that one rung off the the Petrarchas and that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, agreed. But like the one thing is a selfish Crows fan. I was hoping Gold Coast weren't going to do as well this year because then hopefully the coaches yeah. and ranking would have been looking over at Adelaide team to come back. But you're not leaving. You're not leaving there now. They're they're playing too well. And Stewie mm-hmm. G to his credit as well. Like everyone was saying that I remember people writing star of the year, mid year that oh Stewie G's literally just coaching out the year because Clarko's gonna be yeah. their next. But they've they've done very, very well this year and, and I don't think they're gonna make finals, but they're certainly on the cusp, which obviously been a lot better because they've been a team first half, they're right up there, second half of the year they just fall away. So they've been doing certainly a lot better this year. Um Lockie Neal, obviously he's dropped off a little bit, but the guy that's taken mm-hmm. a bit more of the the load, I guess, uh Hugh McCluggage. So they've actually they finally put him off a wing into the midfield, which I'd I've been wondering why they haven't done that for a while. Obviously, your Zorkos and that obviously were in there instead, but he's just he's been fantastic. Obviously, the one thing he's got to work on is his goal kicking, but last week he kicked uh, four goals straight, so he might have fixed that. I was on a podcast yesterday talking about games that you might remember. A Harley Vanell having 30 and kicking six. Um, yep. Sonny Walters did something similar as well, 30 and six. Well, him McCluggage could have had five games throughout his career yep. where he had. 25 and kick four, 30 and four, uh, you know, 35 and four, 25 and five. Um, but he's, he's he's just missed opportunities at those massive, massive games. Um, and on the weekend, he, he cashed in. Great yeah, footballer. Yeah. Uh, I, I was asked yesterday who I thought in five years' time would be the highest paid player in the competition. For some reason, I landed on Hugh McCluggage. <laughs> I think I've seen enough. Yeah. But if he can sort that kicking out and go... He's got a little bit dusty in terms of can average 25 to 30 and kick two or three goals a game. I mean, you don't yeah. find those people in the draft. So, uh, no. Hugh McCluggage he's in the midfield. Uh, he's a beast. He does have to sort that kicking out. Um, what they say, one hot day doesn't make a summer. So, I look yeah. forward to seeing him do it, do it over and over again. Yeah, no, he's, he's, yeah, he's been fantastic. So, um, obviously... As we said, though, Lockie Neal, obviously, he'll, he'll, Lockie Neal will be back, um, but McCluggage is definitely playing well. But the last part I want to speak about for this game as well, uh, he's not playing in the game, but how good has Kitty Coleman been this year? He's gone from being a forward they, they had, and he's gone mm-hmm. back, and obviously Zorko Rich being out at different times, he has obviously made his role become more prominent to a lot of people watching. But I've sort of, I've watched him pre-season and playing this role, and he's just been, he's just been fantastic, simple as that. Yeah, no, Coleman, uh, they were really, really high on him, Last year, I remember reading some stuff and speaking to a few people about him. He did like a 10-week hamstring or did like a long-termer. Yeah. And then once you do that, you're chasing your ass all, uh, all year and you, you're never going to get to the heights that you wish. Uh, and then this year, uh, Zorko does a hamstring and so does Rich. And there's your opportunity to be the number one man. Uh, and he's done when they were playing too as well. But uh, unfortunately, he's out this weekend. Uh, just looking yeah. at the outs. But I'll tell you what, the ins, Adam, Zorko, Rich, Berry and McInerney all in. Um yeah, some Come games. at the right time for Brisbane, the Yins, uh, and Coleman will, will slot back into that back line. He's, he's a first-team starting 18 selection automatic now. Yeah, no, 100%. The good thing, Pro for Brisbane as well, leading up the finals, is that the, most of the COVID stuff I had now behind them, they can now focus on having their full team. Hopefully, the effects of that don't sort of linger, because obviously COVID can linger mm. with some people for a bit longer, but I guess we'll have to find out. But uh, do you reckon Brisbane at home take out this game in the key clash? Yeah, unfortunately for the Gold Coast, I think it might be a, a informed game for the Lions. I reckon they might do a yeah. job. So uh, they need to. Uh, they're falling off the pace just a fraction. Um, Brisbane, I know they're only one game back, but now the percentage is an issue as well. So um, uh, they need they need to, they need to cash in uh, and try and get win that arm wrestle for the percentage back because at the end of the year there might be you know three or four teams finishing first, uh, which in the past you. You think great, but you you need that percentage. You need those home finals. But uh, yeah. I think that I think they do it. They do it well. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's been a while since Brisbane have had one of those games. Yeah, as you said, where they they build a team and they normally have one every month or so. But and I think this yeah. could be the week. Could be the week this happens. Um, probably would this be the game in the round? One well, one of the games around anyway. Uh, the yeah, Doggies yeah, um, tonight or tonight or this month. Yeah, yeah, one of the two. Um, obviously, huge game. Dogs need to win to stay, well, not stay in touch because they're still in touch because Richmond obviously have fogged a bit. But uh, Melbourne yeah. obviously need to continue that winning form heading into finals. But was there a more obvious three-vote game than uh, the Bont last week? Uh, yeah, when Franklin kicked 13, and that's about it. Besides that, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> um, no, he's... he's um... 
oh, what a player. And that's not saying just before we spoke about him briefly, that uh, when when the superstars, uh, and I put Petrarca in that category, not so much Oliver in terms of just the style of player that Clary yep. can be, um, but if Petrarca go and, and, and uh, we spoke about McCluggage, he's off them, but got the potential to be in that category. Yep. Dusty Martin as well. If they just have a day out, they win. Like they, you just can't, you don't lose those games, uh, unfortunately, yep. for who they're playing. But uh, Marcus Bond and Pelly, uh, he's, he's just uh, he's a, and a pleasure to watch, isn't he? Yeah. And, uh, number one player in the comp, do you think? Number one, I actually like Petrarca. I know I've got a man crush okay. on him, and I don't know why, but. Um, well, if I, I've got a man crush on Clary Oliver more than you know, you asked me who who uh who I would, yeah, uh, and I said Sicily, Sicily, and uh Zach Bailey, but I'd probably Clary's yep. in there as well. Um, yep. tough, he kicks it so much better than people give him credit for. People think he's just this scragger, but he's well and truly beyond the scragging stages, yep. he's an exceptional player. Um, so but mate, there's a category of probably 10 of them uh in there where yep. you put your hand in, you'd grab one, you'd be happy as Larry, but um. Yeah, I still think that probably um, the two on the on the as we saw in last year's grand final, Petrarca, I, I would still probably take first. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't, you, as you said, it's just so hard. Those it's pretty much who you like, really, because it's just yeah. that top sort yeah. of ten is just like they're all they're all really good. But obviously, I was thinking about like moving Petrarca on um, with Bulldogs Frio next to which a bit hard. But yeah. I keep forgetting how good he plays against the Dogs. Like round one, he was oh, fantastic. No, he, Obviously, Norm Smith was fantastic. I think there was another game last yeah. year. He's big against him as well. So if you remove that game, actually, where he scored a forty, I think it was against Freo at MCG. He was he was yeah. as a dog? Like he didn't look like he was like at the races at all. Take that out. He's averaging mm. one hundred and eight for the year, which is up with those sort of top scoring guys. Yeah, and he even had that Queen's birthday game where he didn't score too high, but he still had thirty yeah. touches. Uh, he was in the goal square at one stage, kicked yes. goal and bounced over his head. Yeah, uh, you know, a couple of things go his own way, and it's been a normal game. So, no, nah, I'm a I'm a Petrarca man, as I am a Bot man. In, in Bot, oh, hang on, oh, my lost save. Hang on, let's see what's going on here. Might come back. Um, oh, hang on, don't know what's going on here. Let's see if we can fix this. Oh, oh no. Yeah, I, I just heard. Yep. Yeah, okay. Got you. Yeah. I don't know what happened there. No, no. Just blacked out for some reason. Um, <laughs> did, yeah. You caught me say Petrarca. Uh, Petrarca. Yeah. The Petrarca stuff. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I heard you say a little Petrarca stuff. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Just. Um, who was the other guy I was going to speak about in this game? Oh, no, oh, no, but I was going to continue with Petrarca. No, the other thing I was going to say as well, obviously you said about the, I remember was it the Collingwood game yeah, when it bounced over his head in the goal square, and then obviously yeah. there's the other one where Fritch, off, just off fantasy point, he's he's got a, Running obviously it's been, the, it's been the media, he's yeah. got to pass it to his player, teammates and stuff, but I remember Petrarca in the goal square against Brisbane, wide yeah. open, Bailey Fritch gets run down for holding the ball. So obviously you had yeah. that on his score, instead of being 108 or whatever it was, it's less than near a 120, so... Yeah, he's been Correct. great this year. Um, there's a lot of players actually we could talk about in this game, but I'll move on just because we're well, getting a little bit close to the hour and we've got the other three games to get to. But who do you think uh, takes out this game, um, big game on Saturday night? Goodness me. I, I, I'm probably going to go, and I love that it's at Marvel, so there's no rain. It's just going to be game yep. on. I'm going to go to the doggies, I think, in an upset. Yeah. I, yeah. I did, last week, just found the form again. Um, Melbourne, Root. Melbourne and Melbourne. Melbourne might win by 10 goals and we'll sit there thinking we're yeah. idiots for tipping Bulldogs. But, um, yeah, I'll go I'll go to the doggies. Yeah, I'd, I'll probably end up tipping Melbourne. But then again, I'd, to be honest, I'd, just, I'd really don't care about tips. Tips this year are just out, no, out the door. But out the yeah. door, bloody Giants get, getting them wrong every week and – a couple of other teams getting them wrong every week. Maybe probably tipping Crows a couple of games where they probably shouldn't have. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think Doggies. I just I don't know. Like I think Bruce will have a pretty good game. Obviously, he was a bit oh, rusty so. coming off yeah. coming off of a big layoff. Obviously, that that was just to get injured on the eve of of the finals with in the last ten seconds. I think it was against St Kilda or Essendon mm. or someone like that at Marvel. Yeah, and, sad stuff. Yeah, so I think the Doggies take this game out. But moving on to the Sunday game, um, the G. Uh, Carlton and GWS. I think Carlton, uh, you agree Carlton take out this game here? Just keep going. 
Oh, on that, on that over the Giants. Um, other than Sam Taylor at fullback and Toby Green, I'm over everything to do with the Giants. Um, yeah. Oh, and maybe Tom Green too. They say I'm his dad, so I'll stick with Tom Green. But <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, the Giants, I, I've tipped them, I reckon, 80% of the season. I just get left yeah. out time and time again. Uh, yeah, Carlton, I've seen a few times live. Um, they did a number over here a couple of times, which has been great to see. And last week, I thought they were stitched up with the draw. They played late game Sunday in Perth. They played Sunday in Perth and then flew yep. back to play uh, play Geelong. And Geelong were off a Thursday night game. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, a nine day or into a six day. It was a uh, it was a yeah. bit of a stitch up on the draw. So I think Carlton will be better. And um, even though Hewitt's out, uh, which is going to be a concern for a lot of people, but um yeah. and my draft side, unfortunately. But um yeah, I think Carlton get the chocolates there. Yeah, no, I agreed. Um, but we were talking about obviously comebacks, Sicily. Obviously you can almost name the name the uh uh comeback of the year. I forgot what the um oh. uh, award is, but you just know the Sam Doherty award, like yeah. the photo of the photo of him. What it might have been just before Christmas or even early in the year. Yeah. Like obviously, just after all his chemo and stuff. Obviously, not looking great, but obviously he was in remission, which is obviously fantastic to hear. But to look yeah. at him from round one, just what a what a what a man and what a player. Nah, a uh, spectacular story. And it's something you'd probably put on the back burner a little bit. Like, we always thought, look at, you know, those blokes bounce back from an ACL or an Achilles injury. I mean, Doherty yeah. was fighting for his life. Uh, and now he's yeah. a, a certain Australian, an absolute walk-up start, a yeah. leader. Carlton have turned their entire um, football club around this season. And I, the yo-yo, I think they're going win-loss, win-loss, win-loss for a period of time. But, um, yeah, Sam Doherty, I, I don't think he, anyone would begrudge Carlton winning a flag for Sam Doherty. Oh, 100%. Um, I I wanted to pick him round one in my team. I thought yeah. I haven't seen him yet. I love Doc. I want to pick him. I pick him pretty much whenever he's fixed. He's just, he's just that good. Yeah. He's great years. Very much a bit like, obviously, different player to him, but very much like Sicily. Amazing yeah. use of the ball coming out of the they defense. Could play, they could play the same role. They could play yeah. the same role, no dramas. Yeah. yeah, no, 100%. But, yeah, Doc's been, been fantastic. But I didn't start with him, but I've got him now, and he's definitely one of you. Are you have you got Doc in your side? No, I don't. Uh, same as you, stayed away from him. Uh, when, as I said, my team's just full of people that you pick when I'm um, out and about. But, um, yeah, if you're being sensible, uh, what he did prior to his illness and then after, like, he's just a walk-up start. He's just one of the three that just go in every year now. Yeah, it's pretty much even next year, just doesn't matter how expensive he is, you just chuck him in nah, there and you, and you leave yeah. him there and, and forget about it. So, um, but... Cogs, another one. I, I was surprised, mate, you didn't mention Cogs uh, when you're talking about the couple of Giants players. Um, I remember he, I've got a soft spot for him because I think it was, I can't remember the year, uh, final against Collingwood. I think it was a semi final. I think it was the year they made the, the grand final, I think. Uh, would have been, what, 2019. I did the, the DFS draft stars or whatever into the comp 15 bucks. Yeah. I don't normally do it, but for finals, I did, which I'm looking forward to, which we'll talk about later. Selby's got his, uh, the final thing he's, he's hopefully got. Um, coming yeah. up, which would be which would be fun. Um, but Cogs ended up winning me thirteen hundred bucks uh, in that oh. in that year for, <laughs> for that. So that was that was pretty nice. But got a soft spot for him. But obviously, uh, he's he's a midfielder, and I don't know why Leon mm. Cameron was playing him forward. But I've always said he's a more damaging player kicking goals from midfield than a player that that's resting forward kicking goals. Would you agree with that? Oh, hang on. Oh, yeah, got you again. Yep. <laughs> yeah, sorry, mate. That's right. Uh, you... Cogs, yeah. Um, yep. oh, look, I know I, I've, I've said a hundred times, they need to go in and move some of these big contracts because there's no hierarchy, it seems, that um, at, at the Giants and everyone needs to have a little go in the midfield and everyone has a little, little go in the forward line. Like if Cogs plays 80% midfield, he's a gun. Uh, if he goes yep. to forward pocket, then I think it's a battle. Uh, it's pretty simple stuff, isn't it? And you and I are AFL coaches, but... Um, we're not, we're not, we're not starting LeBron James on the bench in basketball, are we? Just yeah. put them in, put them in their positions and let them do their job. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, like you're not going to start Tom Brady on the bench. You're not going to put Ronaldo in, yeah. in goal. You like, you're not going to do any of this stuff. So you got to put your best players where they play best. So, um, yeah. but yeah, Cogs have been fantastic. Walsh obviously has had a um, a good year. Obviously, just not quite fantasy numbers wise. I was playing the half forward role um, coming yeah. up, so less tackles and stuff. That I know, so we talked about that all the time as well. 
Um, Harry Himmelberg, obviously moving from uh, defence, yeah, sorry, yeah. forward to defence. He's yeah, been yeah. a revelation um, moving back there. Hasn't he? What? Um, yeah, well, when you've got a player like Sam Taylor, and I'm biased about Sam Taylor, I love him. Um, he does all the nitty gritty stuff, takes the best forward, spoils, uh, one on ones, contests, contested ball, that sort of stuff. They're playing second fiddle to him is great because you're always going to take the second forward or the third forward, depends who if Phil Davis is playing. Uh, and you just got that freedom, a little bit of a dockety sort of style that um, the third forward's probably never going to kick a bag, ever. Uh, yeah. Like, that's why they're the third forward. So you can take a bit of liberty with running off and getting a kick and sort of drifting into positions you wouldn't usually. If you're playing on a Tom Lynch or a Hawkins or a Cameron, if you're Sam Taylor, you're not moving too far away from them. No. But uh, Himmelberg can sort of throw caution to the wind. Yeah, no, he's he's been great. He's got such a... He's, Reminds me a bit of Sicily, a little slightly different um, players, mm. but they've got that booming kick that can go 60, 70 metre drop punt. Like the, yeah. But Sicily, obviously, is a better player, but Himmelberg's been great. Um, obviously, Taranto, do you think, actually, quick question for you, do, do you think Taranto will be at the Giants next year? Uh, I don't, and I think he's one of those players that sort of needs to be moved. So there's not that, as I mentioned, everyone gets a little go. Uh, best and fairest winner, a uh, good player. Uh, they've got, just got a lot of them. I mean, if, yeah. if he was starting in the centre bounce or Tom Green was starting in a centre bounce, do you, do you lose anything? Uh, probably not. Mm. Uh, Josh Kelly's still there, uh, all that sort of stuff. So I think that yeah. he might be the one that frees up a bit of cash and might bring in a draft pick or two if they do want to make a, uh, a, a trade of some description uh, and bring something that they might need in. Yeah, I, 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 said, I said a few guys last night, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see something like a, a Grundy to GWS and Taranto to Collingwood. Maybe you get an extra yeah. pick or something either way. I, I don't know how that would exactly work, but that could be something that uh, obviously yeah. Taranto, Melbourne boy, going back home. Grundy, Cameron, Cameron's been fantastic for Collingwood. We'll speak about him in a sec anyway, but he's mm. just been, he's been great for them. So uh, who do you think uh, yeah. takes out uh, that? I ga- know oh, oh, we, we covered that already. So move, uh, move on yeah. to the next one. Um, uh, Essen and Collingwood. So, MC, this would be a good game as well. So Essen playing very, mm. very well last three. Um, Zachy Merritt, um, obviously huge fantasy numbers now that no parish um, and sort of he's a lot more responsible. He's back in the midfield. He had the Cinder's most as he came back from like what, like three or four weeks after that, which that's normally yeah. a, a two month injury or more. And then you've got to work your way back. Uh, he's, yeah, just been fantastic for, for coaches that jumped on him um, around the buys or just after. Yeah, Zach Merritt, man, he got quite cheap too, didn't he? Um, he kicks yeah. it. Be- in fantasy, you don't really care if it hits the target or not. But to the eye watching the game, he's just a beautiful kick of the ball. Surprise teams don't clamp him because they don't have that class uh, or that kicking ability anywhere else, really. Um, yeah, Zach Merritt, if you've got him or you, you, you're late to the party, bad luck. Because he ever since he was spruiked during those buys and, and he got to the price that he did... His season turned around. Um, Parrish going out probably helps him a little bit less. Um, he Parrish is the king of the short, sharp stuff, you know, yep. no metres gained, whereas I think Merritt needs to uh, be the man and, and find that space and go forward as opposed to sidewards and backwards. Yep, no, 100% agree. He's yeah playing very good footy, but another, another guy's playing very, very good footy at the moment. Uh, Nick Dacos, um, yeah. one of the best, definitely one of the best first year players. So I was lucky enough to actually go. I regretted it because the weather was absolutely crap uh with the weather mm. in, in adelaide last saturday um but watching him firsthand 40 touches three goals he's, like he there was a there was a goalie kick his third one thing it was i think <laughs> kicked it to pendles pendles had dacos and dacos non non on him kicks it from 15 goes through just incredible footballer and and arguably one of the best first year players that we've ever seen if not the best oh mate it's one of those ones um a lot of first-year players, they're that nervous about their own position. They're anxious about keeping their position. Uh, they don't want to make a mistake. So when they get the ball, they give it to, a, for example, me. I'd give it to Hodge or a Mitchell or someone and go, right, our job's done. He runs past and wants that football back, and he wants it desperately in his hands. He, he's got the ability, he backs his ability. Oh, it, the world is his, his oyster. Um Granted, he's playing, playing more outside the contest than inside the contest. But if you bring in a Taranto, who you mentioned, maybe he can just sit at half back for a period of time in a wing. Yeah. Uh, and, and don't worry about playing too many midfield minutes until your body's bigger, stronger, fitter. But uh, special talent, uh, obviously no rising star. 
uh, father son. I love father sons. I think it's fantastic yep. for the game seeing seeing sons of players in the in the same colours, seeing yep. the day crosses and their dad and the vision. Oh, I think it's great. And I and also credit to his brother. His brother's had a really good year too. But um, oh, there, no, the young day cross. Wow, he, he's just. Yeah, no, you you put him in uh, bubble wrap and you and you pray that he has fifteen years of um, Scott Pendlebury like football. Yeah, hundred hundred percent. This might be a tough one. Might not be one you had, I would answer. So you can definitely say that you can't compare. But Judd, first year, Dacos, first year. Who is having or um, has had the better year? Obviously, you might not be able to compare because of different positions. But is there one that you favour over the other? There's obviously recency bias on this too with um, Judd's first year would have been 15, 16, 17 years ago. Um, 2004, 2003 or something? 2003, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Oh, well, mate, oh, I think Chris Judd's one of the modern-day greats, so the, yeah, the greatest agree, modern-day yeah. player. So uh, I can't really remember. Yeah, the first year, second year, they all start to blur up about – but it, I'm a, I'm a Judd man, and, and you're going to have yeah. to sit down and show me vision for me, for, for that man who will be taken. So I'm probably going to go yeah. Judd. Um, yeah, just because his body, he could go inside too. Oh, wow, yeah. was something special. Hey, again, one of those guys to have thirty-five and kick five. Just one of those special, special talents. So, um, two other posts in this game to spend, and then we will get to the final game as well. Uh, Darcy Cameron, um, we mentioned obviously just him before. He's just, but yeah, I, he's he's made the the this Grundy thing become an issue because Grundy's getting paid what a million bucks over how many years, and Cameron's getting paid maybe half that, and playing just as well, if not if not better. He's, he's great overhead, just very, very good footballer. Yeah, that Grundy contract's going to become an issue, isn't it? Um, and I was sort of half-jokingly saying that uh, you might just have to give him away and not even get that first-round draft pick. And I was oh, yeah, Paul, you're talking shit. But, mate, it's a million bucks. It's a huge contract. Yeah. Uh, and Darcy Cameron, uh, as we speak, spoke about Coleman uh, earlier. When the opportunity is given to you and you become the man, uh, it's amazing how how you can uh, you can grow, but also play the level that not many knew you could probably play at. And I, I'm a Cameron man. Um, and even you know, if Grundy comes back in. Well, does Cox go out, and then does Cameron have to play more forward? Grundy was on a treadmill there for a while, hardly moving around the ground. Yeah, it's going to turn into a bit of a, a basket case job. I don't know how it's going to pan yeah. out, but uh, Cameron. Yeah, 500 grand for a million, and the difference is bugger all. At the moment, when Grundy signed credit to him, he, he was um, he was exceptional. Some of those games yeah. was uh, out of this world. And get on AFL tables or whatever and just refresh your memory if you've forgotten yeah. how big his numbers were. Um, so his best is way better than what Cameron's done, but he's not at that level. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, but Cameron, yeah, great option for everyone that picked him up. He was, what, 500 or no, under 500K at one point. And then he had those big hundreds and, and he's been fantastic since, which it sounds like he'll be in there for a couple of weeks' time, which is obviously good for owners because Grundy will obviously come back through VFL apparently from what from what's been yeah. reported that he'll play a game. Uh, and then the final player from this from uh, from this game, your mate, the Crisper, uh, Jack Crisp. Um, oh, Crisp obviously was. hasn't been he hasn't been too great lately. Obviously a few down gains, but then again Pendles and, and Dacos have been great um this year. For people that got him, do you, would you worry about having him in your team? Or do you think that He's going to be fine and just and just leave him there. Oh, I think he's going to be fine. He never misses. Uh, yep. Don't get me wrong; he hasn't had his greatest season, but he never misses. So you know you're not going to get stuck and wedged for a little uh, injury. He's just a star. I'm mean, like not a star in your typical Petrarca, but he just uh, the way that yeah, good players. Their their worst is a seven. Their best can be an eight. Nah, he's in that category. Um, yep. Yeah. Now the crisp, if you've got him, just leave him. Um, you know, speaking like Selby here, like I've got a clue, but uh, it, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I think it dropped out again. <laughs> uh, bloody technology. Um, it will come back in a sec. Oh, no, we got you back again. <laughs> there we go. I, mean, so I don't know what's going on here. The Wi Fi is full, so I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, my waffles was. I don't know what's going on. Maybe the distance yeah. between Adelaide, Adelaide and Perth, but yeah, yeah you're no. a bit behind over there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, Chris will be fine, I think. So, who do you reckon uh, wins that game? Um, Collingwood Essendon should be should be a good one. Ah, uh, you're brave to go away from the pies. Though. Their footy's been unbelievable. So I'm a pie, and yeah. sometimes you don't. Yeah, we can paint a scenario that Essendon have won a couple on the trot, but the pies have 
winning every close game and being unbelievable. Hopefully there's a big crowd to the FCG. Yeah, I think there will be. Yeah, they're, they're flying. Bombers, obviously, playing well lately. But yeah, I think Collingwood, Collingwood will have this one. So, uh, but yeah, final game as well. Um, we've got uh, West Coast and St Kilda. Um, so, like, Jack Steele's just been... Don't need to speak too much about him. Just He just gets the job done. He's just consistent. Gets it done every yeah. week. Um, you're one, you can pretty much bank a 115 pretty much around that mark every yeah. week. He's just consistent as they come. But bloody hell, Jack Sinclair. Mate, if there's ever a mm. bloody lock in an old Australian team, he's that guy. Gets he gets yep. the hands on the ball, so many touches, uses it well as well. He's averaging what's he averaging for the year? One hundred five point seven, one forty six last week. Uh, he just he's just that top two defender in fantasy that everyone loves, and and just that fantastic football mm-hmm. in real life, which is obviously the perfect mix. It's not hard. Get no. your worst player. And you put him on him and tag him. It's not yes, a hard. Yep. It is not hard in footy sense. Like he's a half back. He's not Jack Steele, who is just if he's tagged, he'll have ten tackles or twelve tackles or yep. whatever it is. It is hard to get the footy when you got someone up your clacker at half back. And if he doesn't, he's a star. And uh, yep. second in the best and fairest last year, he win the best and fairest this year. Uh, he's, he's the Rolls Royce of the halfbacks at the moment. Uh, yep. Brad Hill was off last week, but when they've got that one-two punch, they're they're a formidable duo. Well, they had both of them firing for about 10 minutes at the start of the last quarter, and then they missed yeah. four or five shots, and and that sort of slim chance they had to come back just completely went out the door. But no, nah, yeah. have you got, I don't know, if you, have you got Sinclair in your team? No, nah, I don't. So all the good no. players you're mentioning, I don't have. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's about, that sums up my team, the Derek Henrys. But, um, See, I yeah, love, I love so that you... name. I love that name. I love the name because I, NFL Fantasy Draft last season, Derek Henry, I had picks yep. three or four. Derek Henry always going off. It's a shame he got injured for most of the year last yeah, year. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, no, he's he's been on a journey with me, Derek Henry, for a long period yeah. of time. So, uh, um, my NFL team's Derek Henry, my AFL team's Derek Henry as well. So it's yeah. a uh, it's a dual code. Yeah, no, hundred percent. But no, um, like I, you've been a you've said that for ages. You've said put your twenty second your your worst player. Yeah. On your and your best player, like it's not that hard. So and no, yeah, but no, I, as a fantasy coach, tell- I don't want that to happen. But yeah. No, you don't. But t- tell your worst player, guess what? You're not that good. You only have 13 touches anyway. So go have seven and stop that bloke from having 30. Yeah. No, I, I definitely agree with it from a football standpoint. Um, as I said, fantasy standpoint, it's just Sinclair yeah, we're keep racking it up it, and keep scoring worry. those points. <laughs> yeah. Um, a couple of players here, but like, so, uh, I don't know, Calvin, is, this is his boy. Um, he was my boy last year, uh, Gaffey. Henry Gaff, yeah. uh, it's been a little bit of an up and down year for him. Obviously, not scoring what he has in the past. Those like wait, your one tens. I think he's averaging eighty two. Obviously, West Coast yeah. struggling is a, a reason. Do you think he's a, maybe a player that moves to another team and could be a good option to pick up next year, being a little bit cheaper? Or do you think he's going to stay at, at Eagles? Yeah. What did he score last week? Ninety five. Um, yeah. He. He was the best wingman in the game for a long time. Uh, Clark yeah. used to tag him from almost his first game onwards. He's a Melbourne boy, contracted. Oh, look, it, 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 there's so much unravelling that needs to happen at West Coast to try and get that boat turned around. But uh, yeah. t- time will tell where he'll be. Um, he's been sore all year, and I know that for a fact. He's had carried yeah. everything. So, um yeah, you know, sometimes people are critical that you know you're out there playing, you're just toughing up. Uh, but he's a credit to him for turning up. He's, he's turned up most weeks, uh, and yeah. he's carried some stuff that I uh, know oh I wouldn't have played with. I think Will, I think was it Will Schofield said preceding the traders that no one like understands this unless you've you you know Gaff behind the scenes. But he sees one that surprisingly one of the toughest players that you can get because he just plays through any little yeah. niggle and like he's, he's a much like an Jack outside Chris. player, but. Mm. A bit like Jack Crisp, I reckon. They just turn up. Yeah. They're, they're all, I'm certain they've got stuff going on, but they just still play. Yeah, just without doubt. Obviously, Gaff missed a couple of games this year, but he's been like Crisp. Just He went a long period of time without missing any any football. But, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it from, from that game. So I know a couple of people sent a couple of questions. So before we get to them as well, it'll probably go for about five minutes, then we'll let you go. Um, who do you think? Do you think St. Kilda just get the job done over in the West against Yeah, Stanley? I think St. too good, mate. Yeah. Um, and I um, saw Rats put their senior players on the chopping block. So, yeah, thanks for me. Yep. No, great. Uh, so we'll get into a couple of questions here. Um, where I've got them. Here we go. They're here. So um, 
what do we got? So John on so all these questions come from Twitter. So John has asked here, um, is Marshall um too risky now um if he's recovering from some sort of um illness um and and the potential selection of Campbell? So obviously you're jumping on Marshall this week. Uh no risk, you're just jumping on him. No, nah, and they're playing for, as I said, they're playing for their finals, mate. Brett Ratton's, um, you know, you, you, things can be done fancy ways. And I, I, sometimes I don't understand it. If St Kilda are fighting for a final spot, where are you going to play Marshall? Yeah. Um, right. In the ruck. So, like, yeah, I, I don't think there's any risk. I think that he just needs to be, the shackles need to come off and uh, no more mothering or whatever they say and let him go. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Yeah, I'm looking at him as an option this week. I'm not sure if I'm going to grab him, but he's definitely on on the uh, on the targets. Yeah. That's for sure. Um, I'd be surprised if he if he was less than a hundred. Yeah, he's up against the Eagles, and obviously Nat, Nick Nat's obviously injured. Obviously Jamison, um, obviously injured as mm, well. Boy, um, yeah. I don't know that Stranatica. I think that they're not renewing his contract. Nah, he's he's off the list. So. Yeah, he's yeah, off. So, yeah, he's off the uh, list. So, yeah, so yeah. Yeah, so yeah, Marshall probably going to go up against what Bailey Williams and probably like a I don't know who they'd come as a backup, backup right? Maybe no, Jake it, it, or something. It should be but, a monster. It should yeah. be a monster. Yeah. yeah, no, he should be big. Um, so Alexander Melville has asked. Uh, here's a fun one: How expensive will Nick Dacos get to? Uh, he's soon to be my second most expensive defender. So, how much is Nick Dacos now at the moment? Because that'd be a um, good starting point. Yeah. So Nick Dacos is currently priced at. Seven seven fifty seven. Yeah, seven fifty seven. Yeah, and his break, he got a break even of fifty five. Oh, we're fifty five. Yeah, where do you reckon he gets to? Ooh. This is more of a Selby question. Um, could be well, eight hundred. Could be hundred. Yeah, he's going to keep scoring hundred on the way out. So, uh, what is one hundred and forty seven last week? Wow, uh, he's averaging ninety. I mean, I, I think he's going to close. In uh, fact, I did say that maybe. Um, he might be the one that Essendon and clamp. Um, yep, growth because, or something like that, yeah. Yeah, just someone. I mean, he's at 40 to kick four, so at three, so he's obviously the man. Uh, yep. what we get to, mate, I could I could not tell you, but I would be shocked if he didn't go 95 to 100 on the way out. He's that confident at the moment. I, I think he's going to be under price next year because he's he had all those games at the start of the year where he was sort of sharing with players yeah. in the back line and, and not get and. But and he had, I think he had a niggle as well in the season. I don't know if it's well, like a, a the game in there. He he scored quite low, and I did a bit of research. He still had the most touches for Collingwood. He had twenty six. It was just no marks, yeah, no that, tackles, and a lot of handballs. Yeah, that was uh, the Giants or Hawthorne or something. It was in a little yeah, bit of wet. Yeah, like yeah, twenty six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a wet game, but yeah, he's, he's and that was the week I got rid of him. So of course he's gone. Yeah, gone the big since I got rid of him. But that's no surprise. Um. So Lord Divock Origi has asked, um, good soccer reference there, uh, who to bring in for Hewitt can do some DPP action to get a forward like by Bonapelli, Duncan or English or a defender like Dale, Redmond or um, Lloyd. So first of all, who would you rather out of Dale, Redmond and Lloyd? Poor Lloyd was good last week. He's back doing that. Uh, what did he score last week? Lloyd 121. Uh, I'm a Lloyd man. Um I'm probably Lloyd, mate, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. the, as long as there's just not that much headless chook stuff going on at Sydney where they go straight as an arrow and they yeah. chip it around, saw the Fremantle game, they change their style and control the ball and kick mark, kick mark, kick mark, and that just plays into Lloyd's hand. Whether they continue doing that, uh, time will tell, but I'm a Lloyd man. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Dale probably is the one that, just because he's probably got Melbourne this week, that's probably what drags me towards him. Um, but yeah, yeah Lloyd, Lloyd's been the safety um, for many years, and, and he's he's not really going to give you many of those those dirty scores. He's going to be a consistent at least eighty yeah. points a game, but he's just not going to be that one ten that we've seen um, in yeah, previous last years. Then the weeks have been good, so I'm taking that confidence. I think maybe a bit of a confidence run with Lloyd. Yeah, but I think uh, answering this question will probably go one of these three: Bont, Duncan, or English. Who are you picking out of there? I think I've got an idea who you'll go, but who do you reckon? Uh, well, funny, Selby's big on English, so. Um, I think I'm just going to jump in behind the, what the what the captain says and probably English. Yeah. Um, yeah, big game. Uh, he's had a couple of off ones, had concussion, he's had the flu, he's had everything in between. But yep. when you really comes down to who's been the informed ruckman this year, when the lips have been cracking, it's been Tim English. Yep. Yeah, I'd have, I'd have to agree with that as well. Yeah, I, I don't know. Bont, just the name. The name just... No, yeah, I've, I've got Bont. I've got Bont and you sit there licking your lips that you've got Bont. English or Bont. Um I just like the ability to flip uh, English around if you if you need to. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, the only reason I think I go Bont is because it was his first score of 120 plus last week with the 140. But I just I see him doing a few more of those big ones on the way home with the Bulldogs yeah. sort of fighting tooth and now to get yeah. back in the eight. So so I think Bont's that sort of guy that could be could be really good on the way home. Um, Darren, but yeah, you'd be picking your English over Lloyd, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, I should, yeah, yeah. Bont and Bont and uh, English over over Lloyd for sure. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with that. So yeah, definitely go Hewitt to, to your, your English or your Bond or something like that. Um, so Darren Brown has asked, uh, we've got two questions left here. Darren Brown's asked, uh, do I go Bailey Smith um, and Doherty um, or Callum Mills and Jake Lloyd? Um, like Mills, but, um, um, and has Lloyd potentially turned the corner, but Bailey Smith and Doherty top six in their lines? Who would you be going yeah. to those two? Uh, um, option A, uh, yep. Bailey Smith and Doherty. Um, Smith started the game really well last week, slowed down just a fraction. Uh, Doherty's Doherty, we've spoken about him, but I think Bailey Smith, uh, when he gets that running capacity back from uh, four weeks off, and he missed one just before then too. He hasn't played a lot of football. I think I think definitely option A. Yeah, and and uh, he looked really good last week as well, Bailey Smith. Uh, I, yeah. I have a feeling he's going to do that after being off, obviously, the stuff off the field mm-hmm. and that. Um, I thought he was definitely going to come out um, firing. So do you think he's going to be the number one, probably number one or two scoring forward on the way home, do you think? Yeah, and he owes the dogs. Simple as that, he owes them. So get yeah, running, find the footy, and play good footy. Yeah, no, nah, I definitely agree with that. I've I'll, I'll speak about my trades in the set, but I've got to bring him in as well. So, um, but I'm definitely not complaining about getting Buddy Smith in. Um, final question here. Um, NH has asked, uh, given the Hewitt out, who is the best defender to trade out? Oh, hang on, uh, to bring in outside of uh, Z- uh not Zach, I was about to say Zach Dawson. Geez, that's a bloody. Um, oh, Dawson, throw back. Yeah. Um, but Jordan Dawson, Sam Doherty, and Jack Sinclair. Um, who are you picking outside of those three? So you got your, you got like your, your Chris, the uh, Dale, you your Lloyd. Your... Who's that? Did James? Did did he was it was short in the three that you mentioned? Um, no, no. Nah, uh, it was just the yeah Dawson, Sinclair, Doherty. Who are you picking outside? Obviously, I'll, we would probably both say Tom Stewart if he was playing. But he's playing next week. So, yeah. what well, short the guy you go to? Have a crack at short, I reckon. Yeah, do you, well, you said you reckon he's he moves. You reckon he's got to move back at some point. You think? Yeah, yeah. He might just have that rollback where he's a star. So, um, yeah, I just, I'd have a throw at the stump at short. Could you bring Nick Dacos back? Oh, you certainly could. Uh, absolutely, no doubt about that. Um, but I just, yeah, Dacos first year players are probably the only reason why I'd go short over Dacos. Yeah. Uh... It is a tough one because those top three, I know so was saying it um, on the pod that they're just they're the best, and then the rest of them are sort of in a blanket over yeah. like six or seven of them. So We're yeah, no, and, and the final one out. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, no, hundred hundred percent. Um, and the final one here from um Lockie was uh, well, this is a bit of a so what's this one here? So Hewitt and Wines to Marshall um and Cumming Brayshaw with it and Lloyd Dacos. Um, okay, so first of all, who would you be going out of? Uh, Isaac Cumming, uh, Angus Brayshaw, Alex Witherden, Jake Lloyd, and Nick Dacos. So Cumming or Brayshaw, we'll do Cumming or Brayshaw first. Who are you picking out of those two? Ooh, Isaac Cumming. Yep, uh, Cumming no, or no. Witherden? Uh, Cumming. Um, Cumming or Lloyd? Well, it's a tough one. Lloyd. Lloyd. Yeah, Lloyd and then Lloyd, Lloyd or Dacos? Uh, and then I just, well, Lloyd, uh, Lloyd probably, and yep. Dacos, yeah, just same reason before, first year player. It's, we've never seen it before. So if yep. it dries up, you go, oh, gee whiz, but it was a good way it lasted. But Lloyd's been there, done for years. So, yep. uh, and I know he's had an indifferent year, but I'm Lloyd. Yeah. Oh, out of those names, I'd probably tend to agree. Um, you just, with Witherden, you never know if he's in the team or out of the team. Angus Brayshaw, I think he's a bit more of a, a role player for, for Melbourne. I think he's a, just, I'd never seen him get beaten one on one. Uh, very much at all, if ever. Um, and I think Salem there, they all sort of take points off each other. Um, mm-hmm. Coming Giants, you said Giants just just off all the Giants besides a couple. But, oh, yeah. You got to head off? Yeah, so I was going to grab the kids from uh, from daycare or from my in-laws in a minute, if that's okay. Oh, you know, oh yeah, we only got like a minute left anyway. We're just literally wrapping yeah, up here. Perfect. So, yeah, that's all good. Yeah, no, perfect. All good. Um but yeah, um, I'd probably go yeah Lloyd out of those wise. And he says alternatively could keep Wines another week and go Hewitt to Sinclair with a rookie downgrade. I'd probably rather that last one to be honest. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Hope Sinclair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I agree. Well, yep. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for there. So uh, 
last thing, your trades. Obviously, you're bringing Marsh in, but who are you who are you trading out? Who are you bringing in? Yeah, a little bit of a controversial one. I've had Degali sitting on the bench, um, so he he's he's done. I couldn't get rid of him last week. Had about six outs, uh, yeah. and I'm flicking Dunkley. Uh, Dunkley yeah. highly owned. Uh, need to get away, and I've just got Marshall and Lockie Neal. So Lockie Neal being a little bit down, and I think Marshall might take advantage of um, West Coast. Yep. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Yeah, I'm going probably Saligo down to a guy we probably didn't speak about much, but we um, spoke about plenty of players. But Saligo down to Jai Cully, who was very impressive for yeah. West Coast last week. Looks a really he good player there. there. Yeah. And then I'll be going, uh, it was going to be Cripps, but it'll be Hewitt up to Bailey Smith. So I'm getting a bit of an upgrade yeah, there. Yeah, it's well, a win. So. Nice. Yeah, no, I like it. Yeah. yeah, no, I wish it was Mills, but such is uh, Hewitt getting injured. So, yeah, um, a few choice words last night. Sense. As Ben Cousins says, such is life. You've got a good selection. Yeah, <laughs> no, 100%. Like, as, as Roy said, a few choice words, uh, a few words we can't repeat on the podcast about Hewitt, but yeah, what can you, what can you do? Ah, but yeah, so, fun. but no, thanks, Zoe, for jumping on. Really appreciate uh, you jumping on. Obviously, went a little bit over, but uh, obviously, chatting nah. footy, obviously, sometimes you do that. But no, thanks for jumping on, Zave. Um, if people don't know where to find you or, or what, 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 what you're doing at the moment, um, let, let the people know um, what's going on. Oh, jeez. Uh, Breakfast Radio in Perth, Triple M. Uh, podcast Hardball Gets, a podcast with Maru's Magic, uh, with Selby. Yep. Uh, and I've got a podcast It's time for a beer, which I'm thinking about thrashing out again at some stage. So a little yep. bit and pieces everywhere. Yep. No, beautiful. Good stuff. Now, um, thanks for jumping on, Dave. I'll be tuning in for the rest of the season, obviously, and then whatever with you and Selby. And, uh, and yeah, um, and we'll speak again soon. Buzz, appreciate your time, mate, and good luck for the rest of the year. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We'll see you guys in the next one on Sunday. We're out. Cheers.